this with the funky uncles yo yo baby the funky uncle has really like i've seen it help a lot of musicians including myself like just all right all right here we are fridays at the funky uncle this is how i spend my fridays and i hope that so many of you this is how you spend yours if you're new to us first of all i'd like to get you click on to our facebook page or any of our other social media and share that because you're going to want to tell everybody what we got going on tonight ha huh. i um had the honor and the pleasure of showing up at an outdoor event a few weeks ago, and there was one of my favorite trombone players, Mr. Mark Mullins. And we talked to him about this and told him what we are doing, and we are so happy to have them here tonight. I want to thank the um, all of you who have donated in the past, and it's very easy. Text FUNK to 36413. Now, I want to introduce you to Frenchie. Frenchie, come, come hover, baby. Come hover. Frenchie is here each and every week. Frenchie has been here from the beginning. Frenchie's dedication and his talent have helped us to raise over $100,000 of just Frenchie paintings. Every night, every Friday, he gives us another one. And this one over here right now is the one that we had last week. Can, can you slide over here, baby? And uh, this is the one we had last Friday night of Miss Irma Thomas with... Leo Nocentelli. Isn't that amazing? This one is still available. And throughout the night, I'm going to show you some other ones that are available as well. Frenchie prints that we have on the Funk Shop on our website, thefunkyuncle.live. Each and every one of the Frenchie paintings, we have prints that you can buy those if you weren't fortunate enough to win the bid on the big one. I want you to know that you can support us like our sponsors do. Edwards Mortgage Group, NOLA Title Group, the Mason Collective, and ARC Insurance Consultants. All your home needs for mortgage, closing, sales, and insurance. They have got the whole package. Yes, they do. All right, I want you to go back one more time and look at the thefunkyuncle.live. There's buttons there to donate, sponsor, Take a look while you're listening and then get up and dance in your living room because, folks, we've got a great night. And I need you to do one more thing. I need you to wash your hands and stomp your feet.
you doing, everybody? There might be just a few people in this room, but I hope there's a few people out there watching us. Because I always start the night by saying, <laughs> y'all doing, everybody? <laughs> Yeah. To the wake of the ocean And until we meet again
All right. Oh, my goodness gracious. I tell you what, it has been so long since I've heard that bone. I'm not counting the other night. Oh, my goodness. Mark Mullins in the house here at Friday's from the Funky Uncle. It is so easy for you to do what you need to do. In case you didn't know, Fridays from the Funky Uncle has been going on for 54 weeks right now, 54. And what we do is we raise money for our musicians and our gig workers. For every band that's out of work, there's a sound guy, a drum tech, a lighting director, a bar back, a bartender. All of our gig workers are out, our camera guys, all of them are out of work right now. Things are coming back, but it is so slow, and we've got so much catching up to do. So I want you to go to thefunkyuncle.live and donate. Or very, very easily, you can go and text FUNK to 36413. And if you donate $52, I have got the coolest thing. This was going to be a one-time deal, but we have a few more decks left. And if you donate $52, I'm going to send you the funkiest deck of cards you have ever seen. The uh, Fat Bankers and Funky Tucks put these out. And for every card, we've got Ernie Cato. We've got uh, Art Neville. We've got all the musicians. We've got all these wonderful names here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, my God. I, could, I don't know that I could get through a, uh, a, a card game with these. But if you do $52, it's so easy right now. Some of you are back at work, and you can do that. Some of you never stopped. You can do that. And think about what you can do to help, to help out. While you're on our website, I'm going to put those down. While you're on our website, I need you to go to thefunkyuncle.live and go to the Funky Shop. The Funky Shop has our apparel. It's got accessories. We've got sweatshirts. We've got socks. We've got hats and T-shirts and masks and We've just got all kind of stuff, and we've also got those Frenchy prints that I was telling you about. Now, when you text FUNK to 36413, it's going to ask you if you want to do this one time or you want to become a recurring member. And guess what? Our recurring members are called cousins. That's right. You want to be a funky cousin? Then we just need you to do that. We have five posters that are signed by all the band members. And out of everybody who donates tonight, we're going to draw five names. And you might be that lucky person. So you got to text. You got to donate. Text FUNK to 36413. <sighs> I don't know, know about you, but I just worked up a good sweat, not just because it's New Orleans in April. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> All right, we're used to this. Not just because it's New Orleans in April and we're in a Mardi Gras den, thank you, crew of Tux, but this is some of the hottest music in town. I want to get back to it right now. Mark Mullins here. But wait, you know what you got to do to make that happen? You got to wash your hands and stomp your feet. <laughs> Oh, 
gotta be moving on
Yeah, you're right, y'all. That's a song we used to do in Bonarama. We haven't done that in about 10 years. It's called Chilcock. It's an original song I did, and we uh, recorded that also on a Stanton Moore, Stanton Moore album uh, not long after we did it with Bonarama. So we're going to keep it going. We hope you uh, like this next song. Y'all might, y'all might recognize it if you're, if you're a fan of The Good Doctor.
love can be more sharing. Just want some results And it don't get my boat No girl, I gotta check your clothes What goes around, comes around What comes around, goes around What goes around, comes around What comes around, goes around goes around comes around the good doctor you got to pay homage to the good doctor he's right there on our funky uncle float absolutely so huh, my goodness you know what ladies this is the part of the year that we throw away our curling irons and say never mind because it is hot and the music is hotter here on Fridays from the Funky Uncle. I'm Leslie Cooper. I'm so glad to be here. I'm missing my partner in crime tonight, Soul Stew. He is out tonight. We've got a, uh, a lot of our production staff that is off in parts unknown, and we want to say hello to them and hope that they are having a blast. Get your butts back here next week and get back to work because the crew that's here tonight just might show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. All right, so we still have Frenchie paintings for sale. You know how I told you he's here every week. Every week we've got another Frenchie painting that is that goes up. But we've got three of them that have not been sold yet, just three. Glenn David Andrews is one. Kirk Joseph on New Year's Eve is the other. Now let's point in the other direction. Ah, there we go. There we go. Glenn David Andrews. Kirk Joseph, that's from New Year's Eve. That was a fun night. And then, of course, the Irma Thomas with Leo Nocentelli from last week that we showed you in the beginning. Oh, my goodness. I love it when you bring the colors out. Oh, wow. I tell you what, I love his black and white when he starts, but then when he puts that color on there. And if any of you have been to a show where Frenchie is painting, you know that when you look at that painting, it is, you, you remember the music, you hear that music, and you feel every bit of it. That's how talented that Frenchie is. We have raised 313, I'm going to have to look it up, close to $313,000, and $100,000 of that comes from the Frenchie paintings. You can certainly interrupt any time, anywhere. I am no more talented than everybody else. We're all equally talented, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do unless I believed in everybody's talent. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right, baby. This is why we love Frenchie. On the funkyuncle.live, there are, there are several buttons. You can bid on that Frenchie painting. You can bid on this one that is gonna, th there's gonna be a fight over this one. I got news for you. It's definitely, it's amazing. If y'all wanna, like, just peek around and look at it. We'll take a picture with it a little bit later. But I want you to do that. I want you to become a funky cousin. Text FUNK to 36413. And remember when I said we have these posters that we are going to give away to five lucky donors. Mm -hmm. And they're signed. Five donors will be able to be in the running for these. We will reach out to you as soon as the show is over and we pick those five folks. Our sponsors, Edward Mortgage Group, NOLA Title Group, the Mason Collective, and ARC Insurance. 
Consultants. All your home needs for mortgage, closing, sales, and insurance. Our sponsors are what makes this happen. Our sponsors are how we are able to pay our bands and pay our gig workers and to help out the musicians. When you're there on that website, thefunkyuncle.live, click on what we do and click on get relief. But you know what I need you to do first? Y'all know what it is. Can y'all help me? What are we supposed to do? Wash your hands and stomp your feet. I don't know about y'all, but in this room, it feels like the second weekend of Jazz Fest already. This is like when that humidity hits, and you know you got just a few more days to soak it all in. Brian Stoltz, y'all.
forget this life and all this joy. No longer satisfied with seven desires. I would gladly cast into the fire seven With health and wealth and wisdom, power, luck, long life and love. Seven desires. Health and wealth and wisdom, power, luck, long life and love. Seven desires. Health and wealth and wisdom, power, luck, long life and love. So that's Mr. Brian Stoltz, obviously, on the guitar and vocals. I tell you, it's so much fun to do one of these. Uh, I've been in uh, Bonarama for about 20, we've started it about 22 years ago, I think. And uh, I don't get a chance to do too much stuff outside of it. And so this is super, super fun. And uh, I haven't been doing too many live streams at all. So this is kind of like cool, you know, getting to play for you guys at home. So anyway, Brian Stoltz on guitar. On the bass, this is Miss Cass Falconer. Yes, indeed. Solid as a rock. And on the drums, Alvin Ford Jr. And we got a little surprise, uh, little surprise guest for you. We got Bert Cotton from Bonarama is going to come help us out on a couple songs. How about that? What's up, man? All right. This is, um, this is a brand new song. It's called Angel Flower.
That's Bert Cotton, y'all. All right. Right on the roof.
Robin Ford Jr. on the drum. Until I get there I think I'm driving on Until I get there Cause I'm a real Yes I am I know just what to do Oh won't someone help me And tell me what to do indeed oh my goodness uh, when's the last time mark that you got to play with bert when's the last time you got to play with bert oh to play with with bert yeah it's been like a year well no we did one thing at the jazz museum in uh -huh. december so i guess did we do anything since that no that was no. it that uh, has been one of the most amazing things that I've gotten to witness here at Fridays from the Funky Uncle, and that is our musicians are getting to play with each other. And you can listen and watch all the live streams, but to get to watch music, I mean, not live streams, the music sharing, listening, you know, I won't name the actual things. It, we've got, you know, what are we talking about? Nope, nope, nope. There you go. I'm short, but I'm not that short. Uh, <laughs> all right. And, you know, you can hear music. You can turn on your radio. But to get a chance to watch musicians play with each other, that is one of the greatest gifts that I think Fridays from the Funky Uncle has brought to New Orleans and to the rest of the world. And I'm so happy that you're here. I need you to do something for me. I need you to go to that website and click on that donate button or bid on the Frenchie painting. Or if you have a business that you think would, would, would benefit, then please become a sponsor because we really need your help. I need you to text FUNK to 36413. I need you to tell everybody. I need you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe on our YouTube channel so we'll let you know when everything is coming up. Come on, folks. Please don't make me go mama on you because it is so easy to click on that on that text 36413 text funk and become a funky cousin because when you do that you're helping us keep the live music going a few bars a handful of places have been able to give us uh, a, a taste of what it's like to be back in a room with musicians playing. But we've got a lot of catching up to do and we've got, we're so far behind. And our musicians were the first ones fired and they're gonna be the last ones hired back. 
So we need you. We need your support. We need you to help us help those who have given so much to our lives. They're so important. And I want you to know how much you mean to us. Let them know how much they mean to you. Text FUNK to 36413. Now, if you missed any of tonight's show or you want to go back and see all the other ones, it is so easy. Just go to the Funky Uncle dot live and that's where you can see that our sponsors the edwards mortgage group the nola title group the mason collective and arc insurance consultants they are all of your home needs mortgage closing sales insurance the whole package these folks can help you out and that is what is so important is helping each other out so mark have you all right first of all how are you not in a melted puddle? Because you have just played that bass till a uh, pick on somebody your own size, baby girl. I tell you what, it has been amazing. Um, I, I just, huh. if it means as much to you as it means to me, if it means half as much to you as it means to me, text Funk to 36413. Mark, do you have one more? Can you give me one more? One more. Because after this, we're going to sit down and we're going to do an interview and we are going to tell some stories. All because right. I got a few that I'm going to remind you about. <laughs> and uh, no, 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 it'll be cool. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. We'll see. Y'all stick around because we got one more. I need you to do something very important for me. I need you to wash your hands and stomp your feet. Thank y'all for watching, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Once again, Alan Ford Jr. on the drums. Brian Stoltz on the guitar. Cass Faulkner on the bass. And helping us out on the last few tunes here, special guest Mr. Burt Cotton on the guitar. My name's Mark Mullins, and we'll see you out somewhere, hopefully soon. But I sure hope you're able to watch us tonight. Thank you for supporting this great cause. It's been an unbelievable, unbelievable feat they've done all year long. It's really amazing. Check out the site.
All right, all right, all right. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Mark Mullins in the house with a cast of characters that, oh, every one of you just makes me smile. If you missed any of tonight, please be sure check out our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel, do all those things so you can know what's going on. Y'all stick around. We're going to do an interview. And in the meantime, if you haven't done it yet, don't make me go mama on you. Text FUNK to 36413. You can do it. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Wash your hands. Stomp your feet. Don't go nowhere. Sure, we put on a lot of really great concerts here, live from Funky Uncle on Friday nights. But what's it really all about? Love. Appreciation, you know. Just um, trying to give back. Anymore. Being able to actually come in here and see a great band and get to interview them, that just did so much for my soul. But honestly, just the way we've been able to help people too. Uh, not only to book a band and say, hey, we've got a paid gig for you during COVID, but then also just to be able to call up someone I love, like Johnny Vodakovich, who's brought me so much joy and say, listen, man, I know it's a tough time. Guess what? I got a check for you tomorrow. I'm bringing it by your house. You don't even have to come outside. I'll put it under the door. And, and I really, uh, really, can't, I don't even know how to say a big enough thank you. Oh man, you just keep you know, being you, brother. That's all, that's all we have. Right? I mean, this whole thing that we're going yeah. through, it's just a different break in the rhythm, right? You know? Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> One long pause. <laughs> you know, and you gotta give unconditionally without ever expecting anything in return. Otherwise you don't learn, you know? And they say, well, well here's the such and such, you know, some money to help you out, you know, and I couldn't believe it. I said, whoa, all right, well, great. And um, so that's how I first found out about the Funky Uncle. Yeah, he gave me money on the spot, you know, which I thought was, um, no, I mean, you know, I never really got any, any assistance from no, nothing to the COVID. I don't know if I really applied for anything either, you know, so he gave me like $400 on the spot and I said, wow, well, thank you, Chris. And um, it's a great thing that they're doing that because I'm quite sure there's a lot of musicians that's up in need for for a lot of things right now, and um, but it helped me immensely. It helped me at a time when I really needed help. This we don't just do our art just for us. We do our art, you know, just for you. We do our art for us as well, and this is therapeutic for us. So the fact that we have not been able to get together and jam out and do what we love to do the last two months, a month I mean, and a half. I mean, we were playing the day before. three or four nights, three yeah. or four nights yeah. a week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. we were like, seeing each other like, oh, every sorry. day. I just like went through withdrawal, like cold turkey. I just put the last cigarette down and I have not picked it back up. So my nerves is bad and I'm super, super excited to hit this cigarette right now. <laughs> we come to see the music and we come to enjoy the music here, but it's so many more people it takes to bring the music. And by walking in the door here and seeing all the other people, it just made sense to me that more money needed to go to the gig work. Yeah, the funk, Funky Uncle Dot Live, man. They're helping a lot of people. I really love what they're doing. It's great, man. They've helped me, man. Um, I was actually behind on a lot of my uh, bills coming up because of the pandemic. I was um, behind on my uh, my car insurance and my car note and stuff like that, renting, you know, things of that nature. And they've uh, stepped in and helped me, man. This is the worst I've ever seen it for entertainers and people that assist the entertainers, like you said, the gig workers, and then you know, the guys and gals who work backstage, they don't have any work either. So it's this, this I've never seen it this bad. It's the big, giant, hur invisible hurricane that we can't evacuate away from. No. Mm -hmm. It really is not. Coronavirus, no more gigs. So mm -hmm. now we're here at the Funky the Uncle. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Don't call you, my that's my landlord. He's yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, tell I mean I'm gonna call him too, but tell him to call me up and we'll we'll get the communication going. That's Mark, don't forget no. Yeah, we'll get it straight, don't worry. We ain't gonna forget you. Ah To make a to make a living right now basically. I'm not getting any money, enough money, you know, from the government to even mention. <laughs> I mean, it's not paying all my bills. It's not paying none of my bills. I'm basically just making it off the street right now, you know, just playing, playing on the street. You know, this is uh, just as good of medicine for me as it is for the ones we're helping. Christian called, and I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, I'll come paint. And he's like, oh, no, that's not what I was calling you for, friends. I just wanted to use your float for the background shot. And I'm like, oh. But it's cool if I come paint, right? <laughs> My favorite part about doing this thing at the Funky Uncle is that a lot of you know when bands come in, this is the first time they've played together in a while, and yeah. it's just like a certain fire that comes back. Like yeah. mm -hmm. so you can feel everyone, you know, it feels good to be back together. So right. it seems like y'all were really, you know, yeah, he's ready. For some <laughs> that tonight. Like, hey, you gotta get it in, man. You, you were know, exactly it, it felt like we were just in a packed, sold out club. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Now look, now a lot, a lot of people don't know. It's weird though, you know, like you're, you're pouring you know your heart and soul out. Oh, but it's weird, man, because nobody's there. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just the camera. <laughs> so I we're just looking like... And our crew just like, like yeah, yeah, right. When I find out about the assistance that Fridays from the Funky Uncle gives to musicians and gig workers, I thought that was really an incredible thing. I came home one night and I found my oak tree here had dropped a limb that was so big that I couldn't even reach around it and it destroyed my neighbor's fence and into her backyard. So that put the dental surgery on hold. And then someone said, well, wait, how about that funky uncle thing? Don't they give assistance? I mentioned it to somebody and within two days, they said, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to help our folks. And I became a very proud recipient of assistance from the funky uncle. And we're proud to be a part of this community. You know, this isn't the first time something like this is happening. Our right. fellow musicians, you know, they may start a fun, you know, if somebody, we try to make sure that we help each other. Absolutely. And we're a community of, of band members, we're a community of musicians, and we are a community of people here. You know, we see things happening around the city, around the world. I, I have to be true to my own experience. I love my city. I roll with my city. That love comes through loud and clear. Yo, me and Willie Green, just letting you know Fridays from the Funky Uncles. We want you to be down there and kick ass with the Funky Uncles, yo. Yo, baby. The Funky Uncle has really, like I've seen it help a lot of musicians, including myself, like just in the nick of time. Like ha having, having groups to come together to really take care of the artists that kind of make sure New Orleans is what it is, like has been really helpful. When you talk about lights, camera, action, there's like no gigs, no festivals, there's you know, instability everywhere. There's one thing that we can control as a musician. Play your music as best you can. And when you have programs like this. Absolutely. The Fridays from the Funky Uncle that have pulled together to not take care of just you guys. It takes a village to play music. It does. It does. Our stage hands, our lighting techs, our video techs, our sound guys. I'm a musician. I got to find a way to play. And if there's no other avenues for me to play, I'm going to create them. But it just allows me, the bottom line, to write a song, perform a song, touch somebody, bring people together. So you enjoy coming to the shows? And oh, definitely, us? definitely. Music's our lifeblood. And uh, I was, I was getting pretty uh, antsy before that <laughs> yeah, we we live we live for our music and um, not having it for such a long time was tough it really was and really these people are, are gems they're living legends who get really no support any time of the year so Right now, with COVID the way it is, a lot of these people are really, really struggling. So we're really trying to reach out to the streets, find these guys in their natural habitat, and help them out because somebody's got to. It's a massive honor to, to be part of making magic music medicine out of New Orleans for the universe. Absolutely. 
you got to give without expecting anything in return. And, and that's, that's what's happening. And, 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 you know, New Orleans, the importance of the New Orleans music putting out the love and the light it goes back to Louis Armstrong after, after World War II, and they sent him all around the world to, to introduce jazz to everybody. You know, I mean, in a way, I feel we're doing that here in the den in a spiritual way every Friday. And without having to leave the country, we're putting out that magic music medicine. It may not be some groundbreaking amount that you can retire on, but you know, a little bit of help goes a long way in these times. Without Funky Uncle's help, I would not be able to have put the work into my horns and, and have them back into good working condition. You know. Everybody go to thefunkyuncle.live and see if you can get a little help. If you know a musician or a gig worker in need of assistance, it's so easy. All you have to do is go to thefunkyuncle.live and click on that donate button. Help make a difference in the lives of those that make such a big difference in ours. Friday's from the Funky Uncle interviews, Tyson Van Landingham. Second sticks. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna go hoodie. You're going hoodie on me? I'm gonna go hoodie. Okay. Why, does it look good? You don't you like the hoodie? You look like an Ewok. What? I look like an Ewok? Is that what you say? Yeah. Because of the gray hair. Sure, we put on a lot of really great concerts here, live from the Funky Uncle on Friday nights. But what's it really all about? Love. Appreciation, you know. Just um, trying to give back anymore. Being able to actually come in here and see a great band and get to interview them, that just did so much for my soul. But honestly, just the way we've been able to help people too. Uh, not only to book a band and say, hey, we've got a paid gig for you during COVID, but then also just to be able to call up someone I love, like Johnny Vodakovich, who's brought me so much joy and say, listen, man, I know it's a tough time. Guess what? I got a check for you tomorrow. I'm bringing it by your house. You don't even have to come outside. I'll put it under the door. And, and I really, I really can't, I don't even know how to say a big enough thank you. Oh man, you just keep you being know. you, brother. That's all, that's all we ask. Right? I mean, this whole thing that we're going yeah. through, it's just a different break in the rhythm, right? You know? Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> One long pause. <laughs> you know, and you gotta give unconditionally without ever expecting anything in return. Otherwise, you don't learn, you know? And they say, well, well here's the such and such, you know, some money to help you out, you know? And I couldn't believe it. I said, whoa, all right, well, great. And um, so that's how I first found out about the Funky Uncle. Yeah, he gave me money on the spot, you know, which I thought was um, nominated. You know, I never really got any, any assistance from no, nothing to the COVID. I don't know if I really applied for anything either. You know, so he gave me like $400 on the spot. And I said, wow. Well, thank you, Chris. And um, it's a great thing that they're doing that because I'm quite sure there's a lot of musicians that's up in need for, for a lot of things right now. And, um, but it helped me immensely. It helped me at a time when I really needed help. This, we don't just do our art just for us. We do our art, you know, just for you. We do our art for us as well. And this is therapeutic for us. So the fact that we have not been able to get together and jam out and do what we love to do the last two months, a month I mean, and a half. I mean, we were playing the day before. three or four night three or yeah, four nights yeah, a week yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. we were like, seeing each other like every turkey. day i just like went through withdrawal like cold turkey i just put the last cigarette down and yeah. i have not picked it back up so my nerves is bad and i'm super super excited to hit this cigarette right now <laughs> we come to see the music and we come to enjoy the music here but it's so many more people it takes to bring the music and by walking in the door here and seeing all the other people, it just made sense to me that more money needed to go to the gig work. Yeah, the Funky funk Uncle Dot Live, man. They're helping a lot of people. I really love what they're doing. It's great, man. They've helped me, man. Um, I was actually behind on a lot of my uh, bills coming up because of the pandemic. I was um, behind on my, uh, my car insurance and my car note and stuff like that, renting, you know, things of that nature and they've uh, stepped in and helped me, man. This is the worst I've ever seen it for entertainers and people that assist 
the entertainers, like you said, the gig workers, and you know the guys and gals who work backstage, they don't have any work either. So it's this, this I've never seen it this bad. It's the big giant hurric invisible hurricane that we can't evacuate away from. No, it really is not. Coronavirus, no more gigs. So mm-hmm. now we're here at the Pumpkin. Miles. Don't call you, my last my landlord. He yeah, did yeah. your thing. Yeah, tell. I mean, I'm gonna call him too, but tell him to call me up, and we'll we'll get the communication going. That's Mark. Don't forget. No. Yeah, we'll get it straight. Don't worry. We ain't gonna forget you. Ah. To make a to make a living right now, basically, I'm not getting any money, enough money, you know, from the government to even mention. <laughs> I mean, it's not paying all my bills. It's not paying none of my bills. I'm basically just making it off the street right now, you know, just playing, playing on the street. You know, this is uh, just as good of medicine for me as it is for the ones we're helping. Christian called, and I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, I'll come paint. And he's like, oh, no, that's not what I was calling for, French. I just wanted to use your float for the background shot. And I'm like, oh. But it's cool if I come paint, right? <laughs> My favorite part about doing this thing at the Funky Uncle is that a lot of you know when bands come in, this is the first time they've played together in a while, and yeah. it's just like a certain fire that comes back. Like yeah. so mm-hmm. you can feel everyone, you know, it feels good to be back together. So right. it seems like y'all were really, you know, yeah, we's ready. For <laughs> that tonight. Hey, you gotta get it in, man. You, you were, know, exactly. It felt like we were just in a packed, sold out club. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Now look, now a lot, a lot of people don't know. It's weird though, you know, like you're you're pouring, you know, your heart and soul out. Oh, but it's weird, man, because nobody's there. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just the camera. <laughs> so I we're just looking like... And our crew just what? like, yeah, yeah, right. When I find out about the assistance that Fridays from the Funky Uncle gives to musicians and gig workers, I thought that was really an incredible thing. I came home one night and I found my oak tree here had dropped a limb that was so big that I couldn't even reach around it and it destroyed my neighbor's fence and into her backyard. So that put the dental surgery on hold. And then someone said, well, wait, how about that funky uncle thing? Don't they give assistance? I mentioned it to somebody and within two days, they said, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to help our folks. And I became a very proud recipient of assistance from the funky uncle. And we're proud to be a part of this community. You know, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. Our fellow musicians, you know, they may start a fun, you know, if somebody, we try to make sure that we help each other. Absolutely. We're a community of of band members, we're a community of musicians, and we are a community of people here. You know, we see things happening around the city, around the world. I, I have to be true to my own experience. I love my city. I roll with my city. That love comes through loud and clear. Yo, man, Willie Green, just let you know Fridays from the Funky Uncles. We want you to be down there and kick ass with the Funky Uncles, yo. Yo, baby. The Funky Uncle has really, like, I've seen it help a lot of musicians, including myself, like, just in the nick of time. Like, ha- having having groups to come together to really take care of the artists that kind of make sure New Orleans is what it is, like, has been really helpful. When you talk about lights, camera, action, there's like no gigs, no festivals, there's you know, instability everywhere. There's one thing that we can control as a musician. Play your music as best you can. And when you have programs like this. Absolutely. The Fridays from the Funky Uncle that have pulled together to not take care of just you guys. It takes a village to play music. It does. It does. Our stage hands, our lighting techs, our video techs, our sound guys. I'm a musician. I've got to find a way to play. And if there's no other avenues for me to play, I'm going to create them. But it just allows me, the bottom line, to write a song, perform a song, touch somebody, bring people together. So you enjoy coming to the shows? And oh, definitely, them? definitely. Music's our lifeblood. And uh, I was... I was Getting pretty uh, antsy before that. <laughs> yeah, we we live we live for our music, and um, not having it for such a long time was tough. It really was. And for 
really, these people are, are gems. They're living legends who get really no support any time of the year. So right now, with COVID the way it is, a lot of these people are really, really struggling. So we're really trying to reach out to the streets, find these guys in their natural habitat, and help them out because somebody's got to. It's a massive honor to, to be part of making magic music medicine out of New Orleans for the universe. Absolutely. You got to give without expecting anything in return. And, and that's, that's what's happening. And, and, and you know, New Orleans, the importance of the New Orleans music putting out the love and the light, it goes back to Louis Armstrong after, after World War II, and they sent him all around the world to, to introduce jazz to everybody. You know, I mean, in a way, I feel we're doing that here in the den in a spiritual way every Friday. And without having to leave the country, we're putting out that magic music medicine. It may not be some groundbreaking amount that you can retire on, but you know, a little bit of help goes a long way in these times. Without Funky Uncle's help, I would not be able to have put the work into my horns and, and have them back into good working condition. You know. Everybody go to thefunkyuncle.live and see if you can get a little help. If you know a musician or a gig worker in need of assistance, it's so easy. All you have to do is go to thefunkyuncle.live and click on that donate button. Help make a difference in the lives of those that make such a big difference in ours. Fridays from the Funky Uncle interviews, Tyson Van Landingham. Second sticks. Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna go hoodie. You're going hoodie on me? I'm gonna go hoodie. Okay. Why, it doesn't look good? You don't you like the hoodie? You look like an Ewok. What? I look like an Ewok? Is that what you said? Yeah. Because of the gray hair. Sure, we put on a lot of really great concerts here, live from the Funky Uncle on Friday nights. What's it really all about? Love. Appreciation, you know. Just um, trying to give back. Anymore. Being able to actually come in here and see a great band and get to interview them, that just did so much for my soul. But honestly, just the way we've been able to help people too. Uh, not only to book a band and say, hey, we've got a paid gig for you during COVID, but then also just to be able to call up someone I love, like Johnny Vodakovich, who's brought me so much joy and say, listen, man, I know it's a tough time. Guess what? I got a check for you tomorrow. I'm bringing it by your house. You don't even have to come outside. I'll put it under the door. And, and I really, I really can't, I don't even know how to say a big enough thank you. Oh man, you just keep you being know. you, brother. That's all, that's all we ask. Right? I mean, this whole thing that we're going yeah. through, it's just a different break in the rhythm, right? You know? Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> One long pause. <laughs> you know, and you gotta give unconditionally without ever expecting anything in return. Otherwise, you don't learn, you know? And they say, well, well here's the such and such, you know, some money to help you out, you know? And I couldn't believe it. I said, whoa, all right, well, great. And um, so that's how I first found out about the Funky Uncle. Yeah, he gave me money on the spot, you know, which I thought was um, nominated. You know, I never really got any any assistance from no, nothing to the COVID. I don't know if I really applied for anything either. You know, so he gave me like $400 on the spot and I said, wow, well, thank you, Chris. And um, it's a great thing that they're doing that because I'm quite sure there's a lot of musicians that's up in need for, for a lot of things right now. And, um, but it helped me immensely. It helped me at a time when I really needed help. This, we don't just do our art just for us. We do our art, you know, just for you. We do our art for us as well. And this is therapeutic for us. So the fact that we have not been able to get together and jam out and do what we love to do the last two months, a month I mean, and a half. I mean, we were playing the day before. three or four nights, three yeah, or four nights yeah, a week, yeah, okay. you know? So yeah. we it's were like, seeing each other like, every turkey. day. I just like went through withdrawal, like cold turkey. I just put the last cigarette down and I have not picked it back up. So my nerves is bad and I'm super, super excited to hit this cigarette right now. <laughs> we come to see the music and we come to enjoy the music here, but it's so many more people it takes to bring the music. And by walking in the door here and seeing all the other people, it just made sense to me 
that more money needed to go to the gig work. Yeah, the Funk, funk Your Uncle Dot Live, man. They're helping a lot of people. I really love what they're doing. It's great, man. It's, they've helped me, man. Um, I was actually behind on a lot of my uh, bills coming up because of the pandemic. I was um, behind on my uh, my car insurance and my car note and stuff like that, renting, you know, things of that nature. And they've uh, stepped in and helped me, man. This is the worst I've ever seen it for entertainers and people that assist the entertainers, like you said, the gig workers, and then you know, the guys and gals who work backstage, they don't have any work either. So it's this, this I've never seen it this bad. It's the big, giant, hurric invisible hurricane that we can't evacuate away from. No. Mm -hmm. It really is not. Coronavirus, no more gigs. So mm -hmm. now we're here at the Pumpkin Island. Don't call. You might last my landlord. He yeah, did yeah. thing. Yeah, tell. I mean, I'm going to call him too, but tell him to call me up, and we'll we'll get the communication going. That's Mark. Don't forget. No. Yeah, we'll get it straight. Don't worry. We ain't going to forget you. Ah. Uh, to make a to make a living right now, basically, I'm not getting any money enough money, you know, from the government to even mention. <laughs> I mean, it's not paying all my bills. It's not paying none of my bills. I'm basically just making it off the street right now, you know, just playing, playing on the street. You know, this is uh, just as good of medicine for me as it is for the ones we're helping. Christian called, and I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, I'll come paint. And he's like, oh, no, that's not what I was calling for, French. I just wanted to use your float for the background shot. And I'm like, oh. But it's cool if I come paint, right? <laughs> My favorite part about doing this thing at the Funky Uncle is that a lot of you know when bands come in, this is the first time they've played together in a while, and yeah. it's just like a certain fire that comes back. Like yeah. so mm -hmm. you can feel everyone, you know, it feels good to be back together. So right. it seems like y'all were really, you know, yeah, he's ready for some <laughs> that tonight. Hey, you gotta get it in, man. You, you were know, exactly. Phone. It felt like we were just in a packed, sold-out club. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Now look, now a lot, a lot of people don't know. It's weird though, you know, like you're, you're pouring, you know, your heart and soul out. Oh, but it's weird, man, because nobody's there. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just the camera. <laughs> so I you're just looking like... <laughs> and our crew just what? like, yeah, yeah, right. When I found out about the assistance that Fridays from the Funky Uncle gives to musicians and gig workers, I thought that was really an incredible thing. I came home one night and I found my oak tree here had dropped a limb that was so big that I couldn't even reach around it and it destroyed my neighbor's fence and into her backyard. So that put the dental surgery on hold. And then someone said, well, wait, how about that funky uncle thing? Don't they give assistance? I mentioned it to somebody and within two days, they said, this is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to help our folks. And I became a very proud recipient of assistance from the funky uncle. And we're proud to be a part of this community. You know, this isn't the first time something like this is happening. Our right. fellow musicians, you know, they may start a fun, you know, if somebody, we try to make sure that we help each other. Absolutely. And we're a community of, of band members, we're a community of musicians, and we are a community of people here. You know, we see things happening around the city, around the world. I, I have to be true to my own experience. I love my city. I roll with my city. That love comes through loud and clear. Yo, man, Willie Green, just let you know, Fridays from the Funky Uncles, we want you to be down there and kick ass with the Funky Uncles, yo. Yo, baby. The Funky Uncle has really, like I've seen it help a lot of musicians, including myself, like just in the nick of time. Like ha having, having groups to come together to really take care of the artists that kind of make sure New Orleans is what it is, like has been really helpful. When you talk about lights, camera, action, there's like no gigs, no festivals, there's you know, instability everywhere. There's one thing that we can control as a musician. Play your music as best you can. And when you have programs like this. Absolutely. The Fridays from the Funky Uncle that have pulled together to not take care of just you guys. It takes a village to play music. It does. It does. Our stage hands, our lighting techs, our video techs, our sound guys. I'm a musician. i got to find a way to play. And if there's no other avenues for me to play, I'm going to create them. But it just allows me, the bottom line, to write a song, perform a song, 
touch somebody, bring people together. So you enjoy coming to the shows? And oh, seeing definitely, us? definitely. Music's our lifeblood. And uh, I, was, I was getting pretty uh, antsy before that. <laughs> yeah. We we live we live for our music and um, not having it for such a long time was tough. It really was. And really, these people are, are gems. They're living legends who get really no support any time of the year. So right now, with COVID the way it is, a lot of these people are really really struggling. So we're really trying to reach out to the streets find these guys in their natural habitat and help them out because somebody's got to. It, it's a massive honor to to be part of making magic music medicine out of New Orleans for the universe. Absolutely. <laughs> So we're going to make up for that. And tonight I am here with Mark Mullins, Brian Stoltz, and Cassie Falconer. Did I say that right? Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Oh, wow. What a night. What a night it's been. How incredible it is here from Fridays from the Funky Uncle. I get to watch musicians make music. For 54 weeks, we have been raising money for musicians and our gig workers because like I mentioned earlier in the show and every week, every time there's a band out of work, there is a sound engineer, a lighting tech, a video tech, cameraman, bartenders, barbacks. Everybody is hurting right now and that's what we're here to do. Fridays from the Funky Uncle has raised over $313,000 and we have helped 456 musicians. One of the reasons why is everybody gets to know our musicians with our interviews, and that's what we're here tonight. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Um, it's when I found out that you were playing, I was I was overjoyed because I thought that they had put a barricade up on the causeway and weren't letting you come <laughs> back into town. <laughs> How you been? I've been fine. I've been fine. I've been kind of laying low, you know, during the pandemic and doing different things that I haven't really had time to do before when it was such a day-to-day, -day, it's not a rat race, you're just busy, you know, trying to hustle gigs, keep the band together with Bonorama, keep things moving forward with that, and it just, it's, you never can do enough, and then when the carpet gets pulled out from under you like it did in March of last year, uh, and no, you know, I don't, you know, you heard about it in China, you know, everybody was saying, well, this might be coming here, this might be coming here, but just who really fathomed that it would be quite a lockdown like it was and what it would do to the hospitality industry, the music industry, entertainment, tourism, all the hardest hits, hit industries, restaurants. I mean, every, you can, it's an endless list. A lot of it came back and some of it is still not back you know so it was very very strange obviously i don't know how to even put it into words like just trying to figure out wow there's like nothing i can be there's always something you can be doing but the regular routine you had was gone and that gig to look forward to to work on and promote and rehearse for and write music for was gone and nobody knew when they would be another one there would be another one so I think like a lot of us, you know, we probably, a lot of us probably had time to kind of step back and kind of reevaluate everything and just, you got enough, no choice, you know, you can write, you can try to record from your house, but at the same time, when the rug gets pulled out from under you, the whole spirit is, is kind of damaged, you know, and I'm kind of like, you know what, I've been really busy leading up to this, I think I want to just take a breath and be home, work on things around home, family. My mom passed away right before the lockdown. And my dad, who's 92, is living by himself in a retirement community. 
And so suddenly for him, he's like, he, he lost his wife of like, they were married since 1953. And he's now stuck in this place by himself. And, and I can't really go in and see him, but I can talk to him on the phone. I can take him to doctor's appointments. That was our outing, you know. So for me, the positive of all this, I started being able to spend more time with my dad than I ever did previously. And that's been one shining, you know, light out of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So. Did you find yourself sitting and waiting with that, I call it the three pair of underwear that we <laughs> used to evacuate with because this was a giant, scary, invisible hurricane coming, but there was nowhere to evacuate to. And I call it the, you know, the three pair of underwear that we left and thought, oh, yeah, we'll be back in a few days and it'll all be fine. Did you find yourself sitting and waiting, thinking that you'd be able to come back sooner than, than we have? I think in general we thought we'd all be back sooner than than this. And I, I just took the opportunity to relax and step back and figure out what other things I could be working on in my life, you know. And so it's been it's been good. But, the, yes, definitely the fear of not knowing when it was going to be coming back and when things would be coming back and how fast. And we're still kind of living with that a little bit, even though things are slowly opening up. Still, you know. We're hoping the fall is going to be as as good as it seems like it can be if 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 everything keeps moving forward with the vaccination rollout and so many things. If you wash your hands and stomp your feet, well, that helps too. Wear your quite mask. a bit. All right, wear your mask. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your your connection in New Orleans. When did you start playing music? In, in New Orleans? Well, I, I grew up out in the suburbs in Metairie, and so to me that's greater New Orleans. So I, you know, it's not in the city, Met- but I started playing in parades out there when I was like 12 years old. You know, I'd put a little group together with John Freeman, my buddy, and some other guys at school, David Hutchins and some folks. And, you know, these guys are off now doing like big jobs. Like they're, they got real lives with real great careers, you know. Like you don't? Like, Wait, well, hold on. And <laughs> I'm just kind of thinking like, Man, mm-hmm. I was just that band kid. I couldn't figure out what else I was going to do, so I'm I'm just playing music, and I love it. I mean, I love it to death, but there are times where it's a very frightening thing when there's some uncertainty about when are we going to be getting back, what are we going to be doing, you know? But, no, I mean, as far as playing in New Orleans, I started doing that, and I was in love with traditional jazz music and Dixieland music at that time, and the older I got, the more I learned about... My dad had this amazing record collection of 45s, Fats Domino and Louis Armstrong and a lot of 60s, 50s and 60s R&B, a lot of 50s R&B in there. And I had no idea at the time that those records were made, most of them, just down the street at Cosimo's place. Right, right. And the, more, the older I got, the more I learned about it, the more I'm like, oh, this is a, a ma- you know, this is just um, absolutely incredible. And so. As the mother of a young musician, although he's 28 now, um, and we'll talk more about kids in a minute, but do you remember... Was there ever a time that you sat down with mom and dad at the kitchen table and said, I want to be a musician when I grow <laughs> yeah. up? That do you remember? So well. No? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't do I both. Mean, but it, it, but. Was, it, was, it was a quiet <laughs> uh, response. <laughs> they, but they were like, well, okay, what are you going to do? But what are you going to do? <laughs> and then they're like, well, whatever you want to do, you know, we're behind you. But uh, they were concerned parents, you know. Mm-hmm. I I saw a, a, a statement by Wynton Marsalis, uh, and it was, a, it was a transcript of a speech that he gave at NOCA many years ago, and he said that his mother always said, if, you know, you've got to have something to fall back on. You've got to have something to fall back on. And his, his you know, Ellis would blow a kiss to his his wife, send her off into the other room, and then he would tell his kids, all of these kids who are insanely, you know, successful, he would look at them and say, if you've got something to fall back on, you're going to fall back. (laughs) So if you're going to do this, then you've got to do this. Absolutely have to be 100% And now you you are the father of a young musician. That's right. Although you look like you must have, you know, 
sired this child at the age of eight, I have to say, <laughs> and he is incredible. Was there ever a time that you thought, I don't want my son to do this? I, I don't want him to do this rat race? I have the concerned parent side of me that, you know, as a dad, you know, I know what it can be like when things get hard, and you just don't want that for your children, you know. But Michael's so talented. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think there's going to be any problem, you know. But but you, you, you still worry, you know. But then still there's concerned. a pandemic and nobody's yeah. working. You know it. You yeah. know, right. Fortunately, he's still a kid in school that did not have to rely 100% on being a musician, right? right? Mm-hmm. Brian, how has this all changed the way that you see the music business? How has this lockdown happened to change it? Uh, how it's changed the music business? Oh. Well, God, it's just... For, for you. For, for you. me? Well, you know, honestly, when it happened... It didn't change a lot because I was already, I was already semi-retired. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and the sad part about it is that, you know, when Art never passed, um, about in June, the year before. And, um, you know, leading up to that, Funky Meters slowed down. So we weren't traveling as much. We did some shows with Ivan uh, taking his place and some other folks taking his place. But then when art passed, you know, that was that was it, you know. <clears throat> that was my main bread and butter at the time. So um, things slowed down for me, and, and I actually enjoyed it. You know, I was enjoying myself. Um, I was working in the studio, writing, trying to get some stuff recorded. So when the when COVID thing struck, um, it didn't really change anything because I was already kind of laid back, you know. But, um, and I'm afraid I... I wasn't as optimistic as everybody else. I didn't, I didn't have those hopes that it would be back in a week. We'd be back in a month. So you packed more than three I kind of looked underwear. at it like, wow, <laughs> we're shut down. We're shut down. And I think we're shut down for a long time. I mean, I'm hoping little by little we could do what we can. But I'm afraid I hate to not be optimistic. I hate to be pessimistic. But it's just what I see. It's going to be a little bit longer. Yeah. But, you know, after Katrina, we all developed a new normal. We did. We developed a new normal. And, unfortunately, we don't like the normal that, that we have right now. We are um, bucking the system. We think this is ridiculous. I mean, you as a trombone player, I'm not even supposed to be nine feet within you. Right. Where everybody else, I can get six feet or, or you know, up that, to six feet. That should be the rule anytime, probably. Well, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, the trombone player. Yeah, you know. I have to say, what do you call a, tr a pretty girl on a trombone player's arm? A tattoo. But um bump. <laughs> I was going to say Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop. There you well, go. Well, except for me and my wife. No, there you go. But, oh, absolutely. And she's the mother of a young musician and a wife of a musician. Kudos to her. All I right, props to her. Um, <laughs> so speaking of hers, Cassie, I just met you in the parking lot earlier, and um, I always wanted to play bass. I did learn to play a little bit of trombone, but I always wanted to play bass, and my hands just, I couldn't, I couldn't stretch. I couldn't reach. I know, we, we measured hands. We did. Like, we hands measured hands. hands. We, we broke big. COVID <laughs> violations, and we measured hands, but we're both vaccinated. It's okay. But tell me a little bit about you. Where are you from? I'm from Canada originally. What part? Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's in northwestern Beautiful. Ontario, north Beautiful. of, like, on Superior, north of Duluth. And I went to music college in Toronto, Humber College. And then from there, I started working on cruise ships, doing show band things, and, and New Orleans was a port of call. And I kind of jumped ship. <laughs> And I got Came here once and you didn't <laughs> leave, did you? And I got here in 98 and uh, I've been in and out of here. So after Katrina, I did a little stint in New York, but I was still trying to, you know, keep a presence here. And that's when I got the gig with Cowboy Mouth. And I toured with them for, I don't know, four, almost five years. And then, you know, while still. What years with that? Uh, that? So Katrina was 05. 
So that was 10, 10 to 14, because in 14, that's when I left and, and basically I ran away with the circus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then that was with Cirque du Soleil. I did that all over the world. And now I'm back here. Oh, you really ran no, away? No, I really ran away with the circus. You really did. <laughs> this woman has lived two of my dreams now, a bass player, and she ran away with the circus. All right. Um, last week, I interviewed Irma Thomas, and she, and I asked her about what she could give to, to women and, and, and young women that wanted to play, to play music, and she mentioned that there were more female guitar players and bass players than she had ever seen in her life. And I think a lot of that had to do with, I think it was Bonnie Raitt that did girls, uh, guitars for girls or girls with guitars and whatever. What led you as, as, a, young, as a young woman to play the bass? So it's in the family. My dad's a guitar player musician and my first band was with him and he needed a bass player exactly here you're gonna learn this yeah, right pretty yeah. much <laughs> <laughs> and how did you and mark meet i'm trying to remember wow, that's a good question was it cowboy mouth or before no it was before it was, before. It was definitely before i don't know i don't remember our fr like i'm always you're always a presence on the scene so i always felt like i knew who you were yeah i can't remember the first place but it was just probably on well, some gig some somewhere gig, with right. maybe Have Soul Travel with Bert. Maybe. Well, I didn't do that too much, but something I don't know. around that time. Yeah. But at some point in time, you looked at her and said, I need this bass player. Oh, well, she, I, when, now that you're home from the circus. The cir the, <laughs> from oh, the circus, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like Cass is back in town. I was like, oh, my goodness, you know. So, And I don't do the small group thing much at all. I mean, this is kind of a, a rarity. Even before COVID. You're right. I do it every once in a while. You know, it's just I got my hands full with the band, and there, there's just not a. If I do it, I want to kind of focus on it, and it's just I just hadn't been doing it. So I can put together a different thing anytime. You know, Brian's done a few with me, and I've had uh, a few different bass players. Ron Johnson, George Porter did one, Drew, and it's great to have Cass around. So man, it's special. Wonderful, wonderful. So, have you learned any new skills during, Brian, have you learned any new skills during COVID? Um, trading crypto. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Angry so Birds does I, not I, count. I started <laughs> dabbling with that, and um, it's, uh, it's not easy, but at least I'm up. <laughs> so <laughs> There you go. So, I'm hoping to get better, learn more. How about more. you? Have you learned any new skills? I have a dog, which I haven't had in my whole adult life. So that's the wow. first thing I did when we went under lockdown. Because I just got off tour, and I hadn't been living in my house for six years almost, you know. So I was really excited. I'm like, okay, I'm going to like get to live in my house. And then I was like, wow, i got to be alone in my house now? <laughs> so I got a dog thinking I was just going to foster her. Uh -huh. And, of course, I adopted her. Adopted yeah. Her. What's her name? Big Mama. Big Mama. Oh, my God. You named her after me. I That's didn't name right. her. That was what she came with, but I couldn't change it. She's a big mama. So how about you, Mark? What have you learned new and different? Well, patience, you know. There's, like, not much you can – you can't rush anything that you don't have control over. And so just trying to learn some patience. And I'm not the most patient person in the world at all. And I think maybe – I don't think I even know yet what else I might have learned. <laughs> you ask me in five years, <laughs> I might know then. But I always try to keep learning whatever I'm doing. It seems to try to, if I don't, if I don't try to keep learning, whether it's my craft or writing or anything, it, I just feel like I'm getting old, you know, or I feel like I'm stuck and I'm going backwards. So I just try to keep an open mind and try to always focus on what I can do to try to make things better that that I'm doing that I'm working on. So I'm not sure if there's anything specific I I learned yet, but I'll, I'll probably know in a few years. <laughs> so let's mm -hmm. talk mm -hmm. about let's talk about Bonarama. Yeah. Bonarama started 20 23 I think. It's uh, 98. Ago, in 1998. June 10th, I think. And um, back then there was Brian there was like Brian. 68 trombones and in the band. Right. It was truly a bonorama. Brian O'Neill, Rick and Cholson, Steve Suter, mm -hmm. and 
And we had Freddie Lonzo in the group originally. It was it was, un- it was unbelievable. Freddy, Freddy. Um, I love Freddie. Craig Klein, of course. Craig's, Craig came up with this idea. He's like, we got to go to lunch and talk about this idea I have. I want to see if you want to do it. He's like, this something to elevate the status of the trombone. Like, put the trombone in front of the band. <laughs> right. Like, you know, and get a few of us because there's so many. It's such a great trombone town. And I, I was like, well, what kind of music do we do? And that's where it became like, wide open he's like we could do whatever let's just do whatever so we just started coming up with stuff covering stuff whether it was meters or writing original stuff and then i i love rock music so i mean i like a lot of stuff but i i would bring in these rock songs you know and these arrangements it was so much fun oh. my favorite version of indian red is a bonorama mm. version Thank you. And uh, I start my Mardi Gras day at WWOZ at 9 to 11 on Tuesdays. So Mardi Gras day is my day. And I, I do not let those two hours pass by without playing Indian Red. I really appreciate that. And, uh, and of course, Whipping Post. Whipping Post yeah. and, and Frankenstein. Oh, and, yeah. and, <laughs> and, 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 um, and. In probably six or seven, 2006 or seven, uh, Bonarama did uh, a live at Tipitina's. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was a rail bird that night. Yep. I was right in front of you guys. And the sound engineer, Chris Finney, hey baby, um, <laughs> he, uh, he invited me out to the truck. And he said, guess what I got? And he said, listen to this. And it was the live feed. Hmm. And I promised him my third born child, <laughs> the trumpet player, <laughs> if he would if he would share that with me. Right. That I have shared with no one else. Wow, that's cool. I, I made my husband promise he wouldn't even tell anybody I had it <laughs> if I let him listen to it. But I've got the raw version and I can hear me, unfortunately, on the rail going, Whoa! Yep. You know, I mean, yep. it, it was bad. It was it was bad. But we, we put you up in the mix, too. We put you front center right in the mix there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he and he pulled me out a little bit. But <laughs> but from that moment on, I mean, I was seriously hooked. I don't know, I mean, it was bad. And I would try to go everywhere in, in the city that that you played. The connection that Bonarama has with your audience is something that not all musicians get. Mm-hmm. Do you recognize that? I, I kind of recognize that there was something special about it that connected differently than playing in other bands. And I, I don't know if it's the multiple trombones playing th- any kind of music we want to play that does it. But like Jazz Fest, the first year we played Jazz Fest, I think we started, we, or we, we went into Whip and Post. There was nobody in front of the stage because nobody knew who Bonorama was. And when in you the see, morning. Yeah. When you see Bonorama <laughs> on the schedule and you don't know what it is, you're probably not going to go. But... We started playing Whipping Post, and all of a sudden, like, like, like ants or like <laughs> roaches, like people just swarm the stage. They started coming, yeah. And it was it felt like a like a new beginning, you know. But just just a reaction sonically, because it's kind of a different sound, you know, with all it's, the horns. It's definitely an amazing sound. Thank you. And we're very very fortunate here in New Orleans to say these are our guys, these are I guys, um, and then um, wow, let's. Let's talk about what Bonarama has done in the last 23 years. Do you have how many how many CDs? I lost count. I think we got six or seven. You know, most of them were live at first, and then we started doing some some studio stuff. So studio, uh, okay, all yeah. right. Most of it was live in New York, and then there was live in from Tipitinas. Yeah, well, right. that's uh, yeah, that's right. It was bringing it home. We called it, but that was basically live at at Tipitina's, and the first one was live at the Old Point. Um, that was the first one that we had done. And then we s- then we did some studio stuff from there on out. But it's just we we just challenge ourselves. There's so much respect in the band mutually, like from you know Craig, Matt, Perron, and Bert. I mean, all the guys. There's just this Greg Hicks. There's this core. Uh, of the few of us that started, but whoever's come in since then, there's just a, just that seems to keep us moving forward. As, if, as long as we maintain that respect uh, of what each everybody can do, because if, on the gig, no matter how many gigs we've done, I'll still be blown away by something that Craig might do or that Matt might do, 
and it, just, it never gets old. So we kind of probably push ourselves a little, a little bit, bit, you know. Yeah. But we try to keep it moving forward. Let's talk a little bit about your days with Harry. Harry oh. Connick Jr. Harry Connick, in case you don't know who Harry is. <laughs> um, tell me about that. How did that come about? I just graduated from Loyola, and literally on graduation day, Hi. his manager, I, I talked to his manager to finalize the fact that I'd be going on tour. I mean, it was like, it, I couldn't make it up. I couldn't luck into anything better. It was such a wonderful opportunity, because we weeks before, we had heard he was putting together a band, some New York guys and some New Orleans guys, and... Uh, my name just got thrown in the in the mix. You know, I think Shannon Paul, Powell might have seen me at at Snug one night doing a, another rare like th- thing that I was doing with my name on it because I just never do that. But that he walked by, I believe, and heard me and said, "Harry, you got to call this guy." And you know, Craig Klein was already involved, I believe, at that point. Lucian Barber and we had the three the three trombones we started with, and it was uh, it was special, and it was a young young band in a lot of ways. I mean, Lucian was older, but a lot of us were very young. I was like 20, I was probably 22. 22 maybe, yeah. You know, yeah. How long were you with that? 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. What's yep. your favorite musician moment that you ever got to play with that you would like? Oh man, I got to play with that dude. Maybe Garth from the band when we did, uh, but that's a hard question to answer. But my gosh, because <laughs> w- I do this the last waltz, fortieth anniversary tour, and uh, from Blackbird Presents, I, I do the horns for that, and it's got Warren Haynes and Don Was and all these amazing musicians, amazing musicians in there. But Garth came out for a couple of shows uh, towards the end of one of those tours, and it was like the most elevating, magical, musical experience i think i've ever been in the same room with it was just stunning (laughs) brian how about you who is your favorite your favorite moment that you ever ever had i've had quite a few (laughs) one favorite moment um recording with bob dylan oh there you go spending a few when was that uh 1989 march i think it was march of 89 recording bob's oh mercy album and uh, got to spend, uh, you know, a good bit of time tracking and overdubbing, and it was a pretty magical time. Yeah. I mean, that burns, that's burnt in my memory pretty strong. What years was that? 89. 89. Yeah. 89. How about you? What is your favorite, favorite person in the world to have ever played with, or you got to sit back and go, I did that? I guess when I was in the house band for piano night, I did that for a few years for Frozy, and that was I got. That's, uh, okay, Dur- we didn't just meet each other in the parking lot. I knew I knew you from mm-hmm. somewhere. Okay. So I got to play with Eddie Bo. That was amazing, mm-hmm. and Dr. John and Marsha. You know, I got to, it, it was th- those were probably like those were those pretty exciting nights. It's pretty magical. Yeah. yeah, it really is. So, Mark, where do you see the future? Um, you told me earlier that Bonarama has not done any live stream. We're saving it. I always tell people, we're going to bring the music to you until you can come to us. All right? But at some point here, like with the Funky Uncle, we've, we had to do it. We had to help. We mm-hmm. had to do something to help each other. But Bonarama has held out and has not been doing live stream. So you didn't learn how to... A lot of my musicians, when I ask them that question about what have you learned during the pandemic, some of them, I learned to tie-dye, I learned to cook, I learned to garden, I learned video editing, I learned how to live stream. Um, But live streaming is not what you've been doing. Um, But what do you see as the future of New Orleans music? after pandemic oh that's very difficult to answer that i don't think anybody has a has a crystal ball to really know you know but we're just oh, we're waiting to play in front of some people and we're starting to get some things lined up now to be able to do that um 
we just we did a live stream actually for the Nor- for the jazz museum mm-hmm. uh, back in December for their I gala. Remember that. And Don't that was cool. That? that was really I really told cool. Told you I was gonna work on you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it was cool. But just in general, we just we've just kind of stayed away from the format. You know, nothing against anyone that does it. I, right, I, right. It's, it's been amazing. It's just we just chose not to not to do that format um, you know didn't want to do it too much and we said let's just let's just wait and play take our time because the band you know we've been traveling on and off for quite a bit for years we're not out all the time and we'd like to be busier than we are everybody thinks we're out all the time you must be young but but we're busy enough with it and the break at least for myself was refreshing and it was kind of like hitting that reset button. So. Two of your bandmates are in the Nightcrawlers. Yeah. Props to the Nightcrawlers. They came and played. They came and played, and I'm I'm like I, t- I I told I told Mark earlier, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on him until because uh, until I get him I can tell I get him because of the cause that we're doing here. We'll we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just had to do that. But I am so grateful for you being here with us tonight. One of the saddest things for me during the pandemic and that really, really wanted me to be able to help people was to order food from one of the food delivery services and they knock on your door Mm -hmm. and it's one of the finest bass players in town that brings your food to you and mm-hmm. says, hope you enjoy your evening. That's right. And, and it just broke my heart. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And Friday's from the Funky Uncle has been able to help. Um, a friend of mine, his car just crapped out. And he said, just when I get a gig in Mobile, I can't get there. And wow. I said, well, that's easy. You go to the Friday's from the Funky Uncle and you click on Get Relief. And, and let's see if we can put tires on your car so you can make that gig. And that's what Fridays from the Funky Uncle has done. And for you to be a part of it and you and you to be a part of it means so much to me and so much to our viewers. And I really, really want to thank you so much for that. Thank you, Leslie. It's it's an honor to be here. All the people that you've had on this thing and, and see the lineup and you're like, well, you're going to let us come in there? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. And Thank you. Thank you. And what y'all are doing has just been phenomenal. You know. Thank you so much. Chris put together just this amazing team. The more I learned about the inside, the behind the scenes of what y'all do, it's incredible. It's not easy to do this. And y'all do a great job. The production, the lighting, people, I mean, the whole thing, the sound, the audio. There's, it's, it's very well done. So to turn a float in into a stage, (laughs) and you watch any of the thing, it's, it's, it's just been, it's. It blows my mind yeah. from our lighting to our video to our sound. Uh, we're able to provide internships for uh, some kids. Kate is from Loyola, right? Um, and, you know, we've Good got deal. all these, uh, you know, we've been able to provide internships for these kids. It's been, it's been a, a way to be able to help. When I'm on my show on Tuesday mornings on OZ, um, I say it's my two hours of normal. And I'm very grateful. I tell people all the time I'm the luckiest woman in the world because I get to watch musicians make music every Friday night. And it means so much. Thank you so much. If you had something to tell the young musicians right now about hanging on and what it's going to be and what's, what their future might be if they make it happen, what would that be? Use this time to hone your craft as best you can because you're not going to have this much time maybe ever again, you know. And just enjoy enjoy the opportunity to, to really hone your craft, develop your sound, be inspired, find people to be inspired by, and just chase what you're, what you're looking to do. Um, the industry is certainly getting harder all the time, but they were saying that, when I started playing, you know, 35 something years ago, they like, oh, it's, it's gotten really hard. Well, yeah, but there's people still doing it and you can find a way to make it work. It just gets harder. Uh, so the best thing you can do is just take care of yourself and your own business and really make sure you're as solid as you can be. 
on everything. What's your future? Do you have anything in the can? Have you been recording? Um, we're going to try to just start traveling some more once things start opening up, and then we'll probably be recording again soon, I hope. Traveling is good. Don't forget about your New Orleans folks. Oh, yeah. Well, that's always going to be part of what we do. Because, you know, the older we all get, we don't want to be traveling all the time anyway. Right, right. We do want to get out there and see our friends. But we got to maintain stuff at home. But we're going to definitely always do that. And you better call me on that first show because I need to do a little rail birding (laughs) again, all right? Thank you so much for being here. Folks, I want to remind you, you can text FUNK to 36413. You can go to thefunkyuncle.live, click on that donate button. I need you to make a difference. Please don't make me go mama on you. (laughs) Help me help them, all right? Thank you so much. It's been a great night. We will be back next week with E.T. E.T., yep, that's Ephraim Townsend and the Jackson Square All-Stars. It's going to be a trip. you got to tune in. And between now and then, I need you to wash your hands and stomp your feet. Good night, everybody. Mm